Hi, Wobbies. Hey there, for a takeaway. Oh, hey. Hey, Josh. Hello, hey. Mark. Hey, have I called you Stork? No, that's a, that's a new one. <laughs> How about, um, have I referred to you as Redwood or called you Redwood? Um, no, you haven't. And uh, I'm trying to keep this friendly and call you to tell you happy birthday. Okay, so I had another one, but I'm pretty sure I've used this. If I called you long turd or long turd, short turd, possible alternate. If you just shut it off for three seconds and let me say happy birthday, all you have to say is thank you very much, Josh. Hey, long turd, have I ever called you moose? Uh, yeah. Long turd? <laughs> That's funny. The unburied dead, the unburied dead are coming back to life, are coming back to life. My name's Mark Warman. I'm Darren Kirkpatrick. And we get paid to bring dead cars back to life. We work with my best friend, Royal, and my son-in-law, Josh. We search far and wide to find how a car was built, where it spent its life, and how it died. After that, we bring it back to look exactly the way it did on the day it was born. If we don't kill each other. You shut your mouth before I actually punch you out. Can I leave a handprint on your face? Things are going all right at Graveyard Cars right now. It's not exactly the most productive we've ever been. I'm excited that Josh and I were able to kind of uh, mend our ways and get an understanding as to why he had left. Uh, he assures me he didn't leave. He's just out making some extra money and still available for me if I need him. Got another car in here uh, recently. The Cooks brought out the 1970 Plymouth Barracuda convertible. So it's exciting that we got another car to work on, but we already have quite a few of them in the shop. I brought in a bunch of pods, cabinets, and I think now we can dedicate one pod per car that should help me in the organization so I'm not out back chasing parts all day long. So uh, I'm hoping this is a much more productive week. Uh, the owner of this car, Chris, um, he plans on actually driving this car. So certain little things like originally they used a rubber bushing, uh, just, a, just a regular rubber bushing for the sway bars. He's having us use these polygraphites that he bought. They're just a, they're the exact same uh, footprint. They look a little different. They're a lot stiffer and so it won't have as much play and roll in the corners when he goes into it. it, just tightens the suspension up. So it's his car, if he wants to put them on there, we'll put them on there. I just got all the front end pieces detailed for the 70 AAR CUDA, so today we're gonna put them together, assemble the K-member on the K-member stand, and uh, be able to cover that up and move to the rear suspension. Today we're going to assemble the front suspension of the 70 AAR CUDA. Should go well, last one he put together went great, so this one should be just the same. The parts are all laid out, detailed. I had a hard week to detail them all out, and it's gonna go well. Is he really missing and not supposed to be? He He's supposed to be here at uh, 9.30. He's supposed to, to be here at 8.30 for breakfast. He sent me a text a little while ago What's when I told on? him to get his ass down here. Josh isn't here yet today. I don't know where Josh is today. Josh is dead to me. Is Josh missing? Josh is not here, I didn't even know he wasn't here. I get a text oh, so trying to put Emma down. Put her, like, I don't understand. Like, put her down like yeah, this. like murder. Her. Right. No, right. What'd you mean? Put her down. What'd you mean? Put her to sleep. Yeah. We need the lower control arms. The lower control arm shafts. Have we seen the lower control arm shafts? Nope. The lower control arm shaft uh, goes into the actual lower control arm and it's suspended by a rubber and steel bushing and that's what allows the con lower control arm to uh, move in conjunction with the upper control arm so they can go up and down like that. These parts need to have those bushings replaced in them usually within 20 or 30,000 miles back in the day. Darren, go out and look maybe they're in the glass bead cabinet. Doug had everything I thought done but go look and see if they're in the glass bead cabinet. Why do I always have to be the one who finds everything? Oh, well, there they are right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a horn. I'm not the there's brightest, a horn. I'm not the brightest bulb on the street. <laughs> well, they were hidden. Is that what they mean by hiding in plain sight? <laughs>
<laughs> Should we tell Darren or just let him stay out there? No, we'll just let him look. Yeah. I've been trying lately to be uh, a little bit easier to get along with, maybe not that guy that's constantly picking on people and pushing them. Um, it is part of my character and I know that that, some people say it's a flaw, I don't think it's necessarily a flaw, I think I'm just ahead of the curve. I'm trying to be easier to get along with and not wind people up. You sure don't see the shafts anywhere. I guess Josh's boyfriend's alarm didn't go off this morning or something. I don't know where he's at. Unfortunately, you know, old habits, they die hard. And I still enjoy uh, torturing people. No luck, Mark. No. Sure. <sighs> That's but childish. No luck finding out. Yeah. What? They're in the control arms, you idiot. Here. Why is Mark going to treat us like that? He found the part. He could have come out and told me instead of me out there wasting a lot more time. Oh, who's got this nut on there? Not this me. looks like something Darren would do. Why? Well, Cousin Dougie, thank you for asking. Because we use the original Tricastle nuts or duplicates of the original Tricastle nuts. They make duplicates? Which I have no idea. Yeah, they make them. Mark throws a fit when he sees these aftermarket nuts put on the table. He wants the originals like this. So when Josh and Royal always put the wrong ones on like this, I come along and put the right ones on like this. You don't put anything on. You're the one that put the wrong one on there in the first place. And if you're going to tell them why you're doing it, at least tell them what that's called. It's an acorn nut. It's an acorn nut off? It's a castle nut. Holy cow, it's somebody go get it. Nut. It's a castle nut. Go get some lug nuts. We, we need it's some. It's a castle nut. It's a tri-castle nut. castle nut. Tell everybody about the fast ratio I learned. I don't know the... much about them, really. They're shorter. This well, you sure brag a lot this about it. This is idler, though. Oh, no, they're longer. This is the Pittman arm. Hey. <laughs> Tell everybody about the fast ratio Pittman arm, Darren. Well, I don't really know much about it. They just come on the AAR Kudas. Just like the diapers. Full of crap and all over my behind. You still wear diapers? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> it's time that I start having a little fun myself. And as I look back in the woods, I see two super barred wings. I just, you know, he said Doug had everything, and I don't know. I don't know what. I'm sure you had everything. He... Everything on little Dougie, can he? Look, these are all parts for the AAR CUDA, and so we came here to search for the bolts and whatnot that are missing there. Blame it on Josh, since Josh isn't here, okay? There you go. Okay. Is he really thought supposed to have been here? And he's really, doesn't, yeah. nobody knows what's happening with him. He's supposed guy? to have been here. Maybe he's got troubles, he's in hurt or something. Mark doesn't even care, you know? He's in what? He could be hurt, you know? Looks like they don't have the other tricastle nut, so I'll go out and get, pull one off of another car. Off to the graveyard. Na 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 na. Aha! There it is, right there. This is a lot easier than crawling around under a car. I don't know if I'm supposed to take it off this one, but I'm going to. Just because the Daytona front suspension is 10 feet out the door before you hit the rain, doesn't mean it's available to take parts off of. Next year, when we're putting the front suspension together, that Tricastle nut's going to be gone. And I'm going to be looking for Chrome Dome. You guys were working over there, weren't you? No, I went off to I, I went off to find those uh, castle nuts, which I got for these here. Yeah, you got that in your hand. Yeah, we need to have everything kind of in place to suck it down, though. Just as things are starting to go really well, and we're making some ground up on the front suspension, guess who shows up? Long term. Ooh. This goes like this, right? Yep. Hi, Josh. What's up, Royal? Josh, I have a question for you, buddy. Yes, sir, Marky Mark. Mark. Why are you? Uh, as late as you are. You're uh, four hours late to work. Well, the truth or pushing. a lie? Really? Well, why well I, I, I expect a lie out of you. I still think long turd's gone. Long turd, short turd was original. <laughs> That's so funny. So, so I am not allowed to have a day. I mean, no, I understand. I can take responsibility for my actions. I do. I'm four hours late. I understand. Who are I'm you sorry. talking about? Well, then it's our fault if you're late, not yours. Oh, so I'm saying that. I'm lucky. insinuating that it's all your yeah. fault. I'm lucky that he's late. Yeah, you're lucky to have him, buddy. Yeah. Thank you, Darren. Mark needs to understand that my family comes first. Lo and behold, Darren seems to be the only person that does understand. I gotta go. You're not going anywhere, fool. I don't care who you're talking to. You're not going anywhere. Day, go don't make appointments when we have to work to do, okay? I made the appointment before today come along. It's more important than this, all right? So, uh, don't go. I got things I got to do to right, a bunch of my life. Darren seemed to have an appointment he had to be to, so he left. What we're trying to do is put the front suspension together for the AAR, and I'm dealing with a bunch of idiots. 
Josh showed up four hours late. Darren doesn't inform me of anything and he just now takes off. I still need to get the front end built out so we can get it covered up and move the rear end in because in about two weeks, we're gonna be ready for all that stuff to go in the AAR. It's not making my day any better. Oh, hi, Holly, there you are. Hi, hey. Uh, I thought you had an office. I do have an office, uh, but Mark is having construction done on it this week, and so I'm here doing my research. I happened to look on Facebook and realized that it's Mark's 50th birthday today. I was wondering what you thought. Like, shouldn't we do something? Mark hates surprises. Yeah, sounds like a great idea. Spread Balloons. the bottle, <laughs> and the tail of the donkey. I mean, what do you want to do? Well, I was thinking like cake, balloons. Do you have any ideas? Thought I would check to see if Darren had any ideas about how we should celebrate, because I definitely think that we should throw a party. I don't know, should it be a surprise? I think it should be a surprise. You know, he loves surprises. Okay. Are you okay. sure? Yeah. Okay. What kind of music does Mark like? I, was, I have some friends that have a ZZ Top Well, I think maybe Lawrence band. Welk. Lawrence Welk. Yeah. Well, I think Lawrence Welk is dead, though, but yeah. So, Probably some rock cut. and rolls. Some more rock and roll from the 70s. Okay. All right, so um, what about the cake? What's his, do you know what his favorite cake is? Probably devil's food. All right, for real. Pardon? Not what you said. For real? I'm oh, <laughs> thrilled, yeah. yeah. So Darren thought it was a great idea, said that we should get cake, balloons, do the band thing if at all possible, and uh, I think it's gonna be really fun. So I'll get the cake and the balloons, and how about you contact the band, and we're just gonna go from there. Okay, well, get me that contact list of, like, kind of Mark's friends sure. and do the balloons. Okay. But make sure you're not, like, it's a surprise, so don't tell Mark. All right, well, okay. You like surprises. All right. Well, thanks. Good idea. Yeah, yeah, thanks for your help. I'm really excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. Mark is going to hate this birthday party. So Where, why, would you, why would you hang up on me when I'm trying to say happy birthday to you? Don't be a damn fool. You know I don't like that shit. <laughs> God, you, you is there any hope? There is no within all of that that grease that you got love that, that. Yeah, I, I think that, blah, blah, blah. these there are hard in there. No, it's... don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Tyson, what's up? You gonna you gonna you set the car down on there? You gonna rip the rubbers out right out of them? Do you have a heart? What the? Dude, how is that gonna happen? I thought they were designed to rotate. They're designed to flex. They're not designed to rotate. Oh my God! <sighs> Hang on. Just right? go ahead and tighten that down. Yeah. Where's your heart, Mark? Information. I need Walter P. Chrysler's address. Dude, it's He's dead. <laughs> what about his great grandkids? Yeah. Well, I always thought that lower control arm bushing was supposed to rotate in the lower control arm, but I guess it doesn't, <laughs> and it's kind of upsetting to me. No, Royal. Do you have a heart? Do you have a heart? You know what the first problem is? If anybody really yeah, gave a flat... Older, when you get older, you're supposed to get... Nobody wiser, cares but... about a birthday, okay? It, uh, I mean, after the age of about nine, nobody cares. I realize that you're still emotionally at nine. I think the B in birthday is for bull****. It's certainly not for birthday. I don't know if that makes any sense. What? You know what? Happy 50 years of existence. And I mean that from right here. If you meant that, you would have been here at 8.30 like you were supposed oh, to. Here we go. Guilt trip. Guilt trip, everybody! Josh Rose won yeah. a first class ticket on the guilt trip. That's the problem right there. They say it's happy birthday, but they ain't happy. It's just something that rolls out of their face, okay? They think they should say happy birthday. But the fact is, if he wanted me to have a happy birthday, he'd have been here four hours ago helping put the front suspension together. I need to get the front suspension put together. That's my job. That's all I care about. Anything else doesn't matter to me. Josh, why don't you put the two uh, lower bumper stops on? This one and this one. I want to get this thing clocked so we can get the Pitman arm on it. Is that thing sort of straight or not even close? Uh, no, they're not. Back those jam nuts off. There we go. Let's clock this mother. So basically when I use the term clocking, what I'm talking about is a steering gear turns all the way one direction, as we all know, and all the way the other direction. One. Two, three. You clock it by counting the number of turns, lock to lock, 
and then putting it dead in the middle. That's where your pitman arm goes on. That's where your steering wheel will be straight. I'm thinking that that's the right clock on that right there. If this were standing upright like that, if that was pointing sort of straight, point that spindle sort of straight, that's reasonably straight, and that's got to be the clock right there. OK. We're just tightening down the last few bolts on the front suspension. Overall, it went fairly well. Took a little longer than I'd hoped, but at least the front suspension for the AAR CUDA is now done. We'll throw a cover on it, move the rear axle up in the line, and start working on it. Josh is no help at all either these days. His brain isn't kind of into it, so he's not helping a lot. But sometimes if you just need like a monkey to go get a screw or a nut or a bolt, he's good for that. And that saves me my precious time walking out and doing it. Mark gets us all wound up sometimes. It seems to be his job. I have no idea what Darren's doing, but I guarantee you I will hate it. I think he's just sitting all the The guy that owned the car was a lunatic who would sick his dog on you. And... Thanks, buddy. I have no idea what Darren's doing. Don't care, but I guarantee you I will hate it. That's what he does. Hey, Josh. What's up, Ollie? Nothing much. What's going on with you? Just doing some organizing. I'm trying to get this stuff cleaned up for Mark. What's going <laughs> on? OK, so Darren and I are planning a birthday party for Mark for his 50th. <laughs> well, let me be the first person to tell you Mark hates surprises. He hates them. What? Yeah. He is not a human. He's not a human being. He's not. He hates surprises. That's so weird. Darren just told me that he loves surprises. Darren, he was like, yeah. it's over. Like, if he said that it would be over the top, Mark would be so excited. After talking to Josh and after thinking about it, I realized that Darren is just playing one of his games. And I can't believe that I fell for it. First off, don't listen to Darren anymore. You know what? Let's just let Darren think that we're going to let this party happen. And you and I, we'll think of something else because honestly, Mark hates parties. Okay. And I don't want you to get in trouble for this because he's really going to go off on somebody. Okay. Josh and I will come up with something really good for Mark's birthday that I can be excited about and um, not involve Darren. Kind of twist it a little bit so that it turns back on him. Yeah, you and I will pull our resources together. We'll figure something out and let Darren think in his rotten little mind that this party's going to happen and that you're going to take the fall for it. So, yeah, just let him think that. You and I will figure something else out, and we'll go from there. Okay. Damn it. And he wants you to get in trouble. Okay. So I'll, I'll let you know something, and yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, and I'll think, too. All right, thanks, Josh. You're welcome. We'll see you later. Bye. It seems like Darren is the only one that's having fun playing these games. That it's time that I start having a little fun myself. Right there. There's a bucket there. Yeah. This. Yeah, this one. Oh, okay. Did. So Mark has us disassembling the uh, rear end assembly of the AA Arcuda. I cannot stand Mark today. He's really starting to get underneath my skin. I mean, I'm, I might seem happy about it, but I don't know. I'm just kind of letting him get to me. Guys, why don't you guys act responsible today a little bit? What? No. I'm fine with that, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine right. with that, you apex headed sub <laughs> all coming up to a peak like that. <laughs> and that Pee Wee Herman used to have hair like that. <laughs> Don't do it loud, because nobody likes that either. La, 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 la. Irresponsible. Jeez. Stop. <laughs> hey, Mark, what do you want, really? That's Royal, why don't you take the leaf springs off? I still would like to get the numbers checked on the bottom of the bird like we were talking about. One of the things I promised to do a while back when the car first showed up was document all of the numbers on the Superbird. I haven't had an opportunity to do that, so I'm going to take some time and do it today. We need yeah. to get the VIN off this car. You want to lower it down and read it to me? Uh, lower the rascal down. How about I just hop up there and do it? How about I throw you up there and you do it? Well, just, anyway, I need the VIN. Put it up or put it down. Do something. OK. OK, Darren. We'll do it your way. I mean, it would be easier to lower it, but OK. Documentation is vital when it comes to a car that could be worth six figures or more. The Superbird and the Daytona, very rare cars, very expensive cars. You have to make sure that the numbers match and that they are thoroughbreds. Maybe OK, I ready? I'm mistaking it, right? OK. Ralph, Martha. Slow down. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Start over. You'd be nice, though, okay? Ralph, Martha, 23, you, 
as in ultimate. Okay. <laughs> o as in Ohio. Okay. I mean A. Josh. Alpha. One, seven, eight, seven, five, nine. Let me read them back to you, okay? Okay. You know, if the numbers don't match on the car, we may just have a glorified parts car. That's why we're going to double check the numbers. Um, in some cases, the new hardware, the old hardware is good. It just depends completely on the kits. Boy, I've gotten some kits that are so far off, it's not even funny. Dumb and dumb or what? How long are you going to milk this job? We just started taking it apart. started a long time ago. Hey, yeah, you started a long time ago. I got to the vent to the superbird right here. Double check your price. <sighs> okay. I'm going to go over that superbird with you guys. I want to show you the bottom of it. Because I caught you the other day doing your routine where you act like you knew something and you didn't. Because you always think, new. yeah, you're telling somebody about numbers matching and there's a lot more to numbers matching than a motor and a transmission, okay? That's basic numbers matching. Right. Right. Then why did you tell them that's all that matters? What do you think matters in numbers matching? Do you know? I think we should just... You know, see those this is crazy. Look. Huh? I think we should just go in. So you don't know what numbers you matching your ears is. Out. You need to get off my back. Now, He's took a half an hour to take a turbo part. I want to go on this. There's basic numbers matching on these cars, which means the motor and the transmission match the VIN number that's on the dash. They usually match the door and the title. 173759. There's also 1,000 point show cars where not only do all those things match, but you have a broadcast sheet to support it. And everything from the rear bumper to the front bumper, if it's date coded or part number, is correct for that car. So the VIN number that he wrote down here is uh, a. And then Zero A one seven eight seven five nine. That's what I'm saying. It's all numbers. Look at the uh, rear axle. But the ones down here have a seven What's one seven uh, three seven five nine. Go get the brake clean and the rag. What are you talking about? So he says nothing matches. Yeah. So who wrote the VIN down? I did. Darren you did. wrote it. Yeah. Who got it? You. I did. I had to repeat it back to me twice. You've got RM twenty three U O A one seven eight seven five nine. That's what he told But the VIN's 173759. Is there any chance that eight is a three? <laughs> Dude, I'm not stupid, okay? Well, like, I hopped up there and I looked at it. Well, I wouldn't have I wrote did what I was supposed he said to do. a three, so he said a eight. Are yes. you sure? He did. He yeah, I'm positive. I read it the way that I seen it. I'm gonna trust that, okay? Because we've all checked these, right. and you checked that, right? Right. Okay, this is like in A Few Good Men. You give an order, you follow the order, you don't question it. That's the number? That's the number. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, Mike, this is Mark out of Graveyard Cars. Really? Yeah. I am really? just calling to touch bases with you on a bird. Yeah. AR Can you guys shut? Yeah. Shh. Exactly. Sorry. <laughs> um, everybody's kind of excited. We're looking at a lot of stuff on the car. Anyway, if you could give me a call, I shouldn't have to double check my guys. If they tell me something, I should be able to run with that. Uh, that's exactly why I immediately picked up the phone when I found out that there was a little bit of a variance in the VIN, which is a cool thing. Uh, and called my, my customer, Mike, to let him know. Look forward to talking to you. Bye. We just got through checking all the numbers on the 70 Superbird, uh, the motor VIN number, the transmission VIN number, uh, dash VIN number to make sure that those all match. Uh, what happened on this one, even the manufacturer just shows that there were human beings working on the cars as well as the, the machine that made the dash VIN. They took the three, it looked like an eight, or the eight looked like a three, one way or the other, and it ended up being the identical VIN number except one digit off. Um, I will just for safety's sake take a look through the NASCAR registry and make sure that both of those cars don't exist because then it could be really weird, but it's kind of fun and cool. Hi, good afternoon, Wilbies. So I'm just sitting here relaxing. Uh, I've got some downtime and I get a phone call from Mike Hill, which he's the owner of the Superbird outside that we have. Oh, hey, Mike, how are you? I don't exactly know why he's calling, but um, I guess Mark tried giving him a call earlier today. You know, he, he actually took off. He had some errands to run. Um, is there anything I can help you out with at, at the moment? It actually just dawned on me that I think this would be a perfect opportunity for Holly to start dipping her toes into some, some new research. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, actually, Mike, one more thing before I let you go. Uh, we just hired a new research assistant and I, I kind of want to have her pick your brain a little bit on your, uh, on your super bird. I think this would actually be a really good, really good study session for her. And uh, I think it'd be a really good opportunity for her to kind of impress Mark due to the fact that it's his birthday. All right, Michael, it was a pleasure to meet you. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Mm, bye bye. 
I felt really bad, you know, about what I did to her um, as far as the AAR went and kind of just putting her out on the spot. So Darren's up to no good. And I think this will be a perfect opportunity for Darren to hang himself. So yeah, it's gonna be good. Hey Holly, how are you? That's not right. Here we go. I suspect in about six months, you'll probably see a new Mark Warman. Are you okay? You're exhausting. Well, you're annoying. You're annoying it is. Creature. It is annoying. Hey, there's Molly. Hi, Holly. Holly's here. Good, yeah. Hi, Holly. All right, so. Uh, We're gonna have a birthday party for Mark. We're getting ready to do some decorating. It's gonna be a great time. I know that Darren's playing the game with me, and I think that I'm playing the game with him right now because he needs a little taste of his own medicine. Okay, okay so here's a banner. Mark loves parties. I don't think Mark's gonna like the decorations at all. He doesn't like parties, he doesn't like get-togethers, he doesn't like people. They're wrong that I hate people. I just, I just don't like freaks. So, I don't know if you noticed, but the colors of the streamers match the cars that Mark's working on. I hope he notices. I hope so, too. <laughs> Mark says he's not real big on birthday parties, but, you know, he'll appreciate the thought. He might not show it right off the bat. Darren is playing the game with Holly. Darren knows how Mark feels about birthdays. You know, he's not really excited about it, but... Um, I think he's just setting Holly up. Funny, he has to... Quick, who am I? Okay. Oh, first first you guys, come on, we don't have very much time. Oh, you want some tape? Hey, uh, Darren. I don't know if that was Mark or not, but I don't want him to walk in here on this. Go out make sure, keep him out there for a little bit. Okay, Darren, please keep it down before I come back in and I show you judo chomp. Why are you here? What's up, man? I just got off work and thought I'd come see what's going on. Did you get my car washed? Been asking for like three days every night you come over and you keep saying you're gonna do it. Well, it's good to see you too, Mark. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay, working on Sunday. Okay, come here, don't be a fool. Try to learn something, buddy. So I came in today, uh, it's Sunday, and that's usually one of the days I can get a lot of work done, especially like paperwork and, and plus dot some of my I's and cross some of my T's. Uh, one of the things I did is I brought in my, uh, my NASCAR uh, race program. It's got all 1920 of the Superbirds in here. It's got all the original VINs, when they were made, when they were shipped, and their destination. On our Superbird, uh, with that one digit being off, uh, which one's registered in here, as well as uh, what does that mean to the fender tag. I went home and I got the fender tag out of the safe. This, this is interesting that you're here. 173759, 173759, that's the fender tag. So it looks like the only mistake was on the dash. So what I want to do is I want to see how they have it registered in here. So your eyes are better than mine. Maybe you can help me find it real quick. But we're looking for either 178759 or 173759. You just shout out if you see it. Good job, Holly. I'm glad you thought of this. That was Marcus' 50th party. He's going to love it. I thought you were the one that said that he, you wanted to throw a party for me. No, it was your idea. I don't think you it was all my credit, idea. idea. You had a huge part in it. You were like, yeah, he loves birthday. Okay. Are you OK? Can you get to the hospital or the doctor? Take the temperature or anything? You're I, don't, I don't think you're all right. I think you've got some ah, problems. He is really exhausted. One, one. Sorry, I didn't mean to scratch you. OK, 173759. If there's no 178759 in this registry, and it doesn't look like there is. It's going to be a human error. It's either going to be something that happened at the factory 40-some years ago, or it's going to be something that happened here in the last 24 hours. No. You guys wrote down 178759. That's not right. The dash VIN is 173. I'm sure I'm seeing Yes, 173759. 
Here we go. It's either Josh or it's Darren. One of those two guys made the mistake. Neither one will probably step up to it, but it definitely wasn't a mistake at the factory. The numbers are all right on the car. It's something that happened here. So what you're saying is it's Darren's fault he wrote it down. Right? Yes. You guarantee Hell, dude, he's, okay. he's here. Let's go okay. talk to him. Let's go talk to him. Let's go talk to him. Let's go talk to him. Hang on, talk to him right now. Right. Hang on. Let me show you something over here. Hang on. Come here. Just what? let that go for just a second. I'm not letting anything go. Well, hang on. I just wanted to show you something. Like I don't care who Darren's did it. Not here. I don't care who did Darren, it. Darren's not here. I Actually, don't care on. who did it, but I would like to know who did it, who I can never trust again. Wow, it's seriously that big of a deal? No, it's not. I just want to know who I can't trust. Oh, okay. Well, put my life in your hand, your hand in mine. My life life. What life, is this life. stuff on that, the cowl? Like, why isn't this coming off? It needs to be hand rubbed out. It's the it's the soap that you spray on there so overspray won't get on it. Oh. What about this here? Wow. Is this seriously rusting in there? Dude, hang on, hang on. Hard. Hang on. Darren! Durwood! Okay, just cut the empties off. Durwood. Happy birthday to you, buddy. Surprise! Well, surprise, dude. <laughs> Fifty is not old if you're a tree. <laughs> so Mark came in, he looked around, and he was not impressed by what we had done for him. Uh, obviously, he was biting his tongue and being nice. You like? Mm -hmm. Whose idea was it? Yeah. Darren said you love surprises and parties. I don't like him. I never liked him. I didn't even like him when I was a kid. I certainly don't like him at 50 years old. Did Darren make a suggestion to you to do it? Yeah. Yeah. So that oh, he's... nice talk. <laughs> <laughs> so the game is still on, throwing, right? You like. What do you want to Yeah, yeah did, no, did you, you try to set her up? So when all the smoke clears, guess what happens? Holly's sitting there feeling bad. You know, like she did something wrong. Well, she didn't do anything wrong. She just followed their lead. I like it because Holly tried to do what she thought so like I would it. like. You like it? Good. I thought you'd like it. What are you liking at me for? You and I, however, are gonna go to the Outback for steak. In the end, he learned that Darren, it was all Darren's idea, and we're going out to steak. Oh. I will meet you over there. Okay, great. Maybe like 45 20, minutes. 20 Perfect. Cool, thank you. Uh, thanks. Is she leaving? Looks that way, Darren. He's getting in his car and turning it on. Oh, jeez. Look, we did all this for nothing. Hey, hi, Holly. Hi. How are you? Great. How are you? Good. I just wanted to let you know I got off the phone with Mike Hill, and he is going to be flying out here as a gift from Holly and I to you. Um, you know, we just wanted to be a good birthday for you, and you know, just have the customer. I doubt very much you had a lot to do with it except delivering the good news to me. So I'll go to. Holly. Okay. Did you have a conversation with Mike? I did. He's a nice guy, isn't he? He's a great guy. Holly had taken it upon herself to get in contact with the owner of the Superbird. So he's coming out? The end of the week. I know that he was doing that car with his for his son. Either he gets that one or his son gets that one, but they have two Superbirds. And uh, I was hoping they'd be able to get out and get, tell the story, so. Yeah. Nice work. Are you in a better mood now? I mean, I'm as happy as I've ever been. Good. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, happy birthday, buddy. <laughs> and we'll see you later. At least that's something to be happy yeah. about. Yeah. All right. Okay, sir. Holly, bye bye. Holly, you rock. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. I used to bench over 400. I'm thinking I'll probably head that direction. I think you're pretty close. So it was a really good feeling to come away from all of that, not only with two Superbirds. 68 Shelby GT500. This is a convertible. Went over and documented it for him. That's what I do. I could tell it was an original car. There's your car. There they are. Hey, hey. Hey. Mike and Michael, nice how are you? Hey. Nice to see you. It's really great having Mike and his son Michael come out today. They flew all the way across the country uh, to meet us, talk about their car, share the story behind the Superbird, or Superbirds in this case. I know that uh, we're going to be committed to making it look as perfect as one can look. I know for a fact that when it gets returned back to him, uh, they're going to be a very happy household. So there's your baby. Nice. <laughs> I haven't even unpacked it. I just <laughs> I put it on the hoist and raised it up out of everybody's way. I put the spoiler on it because that was obviously wedged inside at the time. But right. 
I think Mike's story is an amazing story. These cars, to me, were my ultimate muscle car. Mike had wanted a Superbird from the time he was a little kid. Uh, there was an urban legend in town that a guy had one. Whenever I would pass by this gentleman's house, from the road, you could just see the tips of the wings as you were coming by. It was one of those things that where I said, if I ever get a chance, I was gonna to go over there and see if I could buy these cars. Uh, however, the urban legend also said that the guy that owned the car was a lunatic who would stick his dog on you and kill you if you went up and so much as knocked on the door and asked about him. So Mike never did. We decided to build a Daytona clone. They got quite a ways on the Daytona. They got the rear body panel replaced on it from the 68 to the 69. They changed the side markers out. So we get our parts together on the tail end of the car. Well, when it comes to the front end of the car, I have no idea how to hang this fiberglass nose on it. So I discussed it with a guy that I met at the post office. He's an old gearhead buddy of mine. He said, you know what? He said, why don't you go around to the guy's house and show him that you're actually working on a wing car by taking your parts and you might have a chance of getting a look at his car. And he did just that. He collected the few parts that he had questions about, got his son in the car, and they went over to the guy's house. Sure enough, he met me at the door. He comes out of the door and says, can I help you? I go around to the back of my truck and I quickly grab the fiberglass nose cone, hold it up to show him, hey, I've, I've got parts here. And he says, uh, what can I help you with? After Mike explained to him it was a father-son project that they were working on together, I think that softened the blow to the old man. And he says, yeah, if you want to take some pictures, go take some pictures. We get out of the truck, we start heading back to the woods, and as I look back in the woods, I see two Superbird wings, just as plain as day. Here you got the year 2007, and these cars are still in this guy's backyard, undiscovered, unrestored, just sitting there. He spent some time with his camera, taking all the necessary photos of the bottom side of the Superbird, figuring out how the pieces go together. While he was doing that, his son, Michael, was over visiting with the old man. And uh, he asked my son, he says, uh, well, what else do you guys do? Well, I help my dad work on cars. We motocross ride together. And I mentioned, I said, you know, I, I teach my son the old school stuff. Little did I know that kind of struck a, a good feeling with the old guy. I guess the guy that owned the cars really took a liking to Michael and to his dad and the idea that they were working on a project together. And uh, I think they began to form a friendship out of that. You know, when we went to the truck, I thanked him for his time. I reached across the dash and I got one of my business cards, and I also got a $10 bill that I had there in the ashtray, and I handed them both of them. And I said, hey, I want you to keep this. And he said, well, what's, what's this for? Said, I'm giving you that $10 so you don't throw away my business card, because I know these are your children, and I know that they're, you know, they're yours, and you want to keep them. But if for any reason you ever decide you want to sell them, I know that you know what you have here, and I know what you have here. Those cars are very rare, and they're worth a lot of money. I'll be willing to give you your price for them. And that's all I said. We didn't talk price. It was just, I'll give you your price for them. So after a few months, out of the blue, Mike gets a phone call from the guy that owns the cars saying, are you still interested in these things? Again, he met us at the front door, was happy to see us. He says, I've, I've considered selling you these cars under two reasons. Number one, you don't take these cars and resell them. He says, because my second condition is, you guys being a father-son team, he says, I want to see you end up with one bird, and I want to see him end up with one bird. Mike made the promise and kept the promise and ended up getting cars from him. To this day, he and I have come to be really good friends. Uh, he and Michael and I go riding motorcycles together, and uh, we've developed a really good relationship. So it was a really good feeling to come away from all of that, not only with two Superbirds, but to know we've made a new friend here and that, that he's gonna see his kids come back to life. You know, stories like Mike's, these are the fabrics that make up our life. At least my life and the generation of the people that I hang out with and that I grew up with. I love that Graveyard Cars can go now and tell these stories and bring to life other people's history and other people's memories. Uh, I'm honored to be a part of this project. I was talking to Mike, I'm gonna get back at the gym. Uh, he gave me a few pointers on it. He's obviously done it for many, many years and is good at it. I suspect in about six months, you'll probably see a new, uh, new Mark Warman. So you probably notice when you look at Mike, he's a professional bodybuilder, that there's a lot of similarities. We were just talking a little bit earlier about some different tricks at the gym, how I can, he used to bench over 400. I'm thinking I'll probably head that direction. I think you're pretty close. Mark's on this weightlifting thing now. I don't know how far that's gonna go. It's probably gonna go as far as it did before. We had a guy named here, Mark Kane, who was a fighter. Mark was all gonna fight everybody then. So we'll see how this weightlifting stuff goes, bodybuilding stuff. At my age, in my 40s now, I doubt very much that I'm gonna be, 40, 40s by, by be bench pressing 50, you know, 400 pounds at my age. So my guess is if I could like pump, like, like Mike, you were saying you'd do 
Like if you went to the gym, you'd, you'd go for reps versus now. Oh, nowadays, and like you're right about the, the, the 40s something. Yeah. That's, that's when the joints start hurting, your knees, your elbows. Yeah. Uh, back in the day when I was youthful and full of vigor, 400 pounds, I could do 400 pounds. Yeah. Nowadays, if I, walk in the, if I walk in the gym and put 225 on the bench press and do eight strict reps, four sets of that, that's plenty. Oh, that's for way you and plenty. I. Oh my gosh, yeah. That will develop, it'll still build muscle just like you need. Yeah, absolutely. Always probably my least favorite part of it is you kind of forge these little friendships and you don't want to say why, you want to say, hey, let's go hang out, but they got to go home. So uh, we shook hands and uh, sent them off to hit the plane for the big East Coast. Next time I see you, my friend, we will have a white superbird ready to drive back to South Carolina. Nice. I will be cut and chiseled like you. I am close to it. it. I I'm will. Counting on You're going to hold me to it, right? You betcha. Well, I am looking forward to it. All right, guys. Thank you. See you later. All right. Bye. He was just saying, would you wonder what he was saying right there? You didn't hear it. He was saying that I'm a uh, perfect specimen for bodybuilding. So, and I kind of know that from my earlier days. He's saying meatballs like you can't do much, and he said bald people they can't lift, and so. That was really a good birthday present. I appreciate it very much. Where your balloons all go? Same place you're gonna go in a few minutes. I threw Where's everything that? away, the, man. The garbage? I don't like any of it. You what? I don't like any of it. I got you something. When you met Mike Hill, I know you and him had a lot in common. We're talking about working out and getting shapes. So I got your membership to a gym. That picture you took the other day. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Why? You know, Is that like a real it? membership? Yeah, real membership. Mm. It's platinum. God, I look cute. You, did you have the guys make me look fatter? No. To motivate me? Mm -mm. I already feel bad enough. Go it's ahead. not a terrible picture. I look like I probably lift weights in that anyway. You look like a weightlifter to me. I think that's a nice gesture. I, I would have picked a better picture. I mean, girls look at that a lot. But. Yeah. But that's good. I need that. You're not well, saying I'm fat, right? No, but I thought you might be able to get your shirts cheaper if you don't have to get them from Omar the tent maker from now on. Okay. Thanks, I guess. You're welcome. See ya. From the tent maker. <laughs> that was good, Darren. Yeah. I think overall we didn't have too terrible of a week. We did get the front suspension built out for the AAR CUDA, which is really good because now we can get the rear suspension built out and when the car comes out of body and paint, we'll be ready to set it down and start doing the final assembly. So it's mean when you set me out to look for parts you already had. Do you listen to yourself? Do you know what we have to endure? No. And I think on the downside of things, you managed to burn up a lot of time preparing for a party that I didn't want, that everybody knew I didn't want, and you were totally doing it for the sole purpose of making Holly look bad. So I killed two birds with one stone. High five. Made Holly look bad and got to you. Another thing is you barely got off the hook on the VIN numbers for the Superbird. It was actually Josh who read off the mistake. So all you did was copied it down. Just wrote it like that's, you said it. That's, you did fine. So you're off the hook on that one, but barely off the hook on that one. So what good is Josh? Josh is absolutely <laughs> worthless. It, it was nice having Mike Hill come out with his son. Very respectful. Yeah. I really like that southern type of uh, respect that they have. It was nice talking with him and, and hearing the stories about the Superbirds. I think those Superbirds are a fantastic story. That was another score for Holly. Holly, 10. Why would she Darren, zero. She put Holly. the whole thing together. But I would like to take a moment to thank you for the gym membership. Even though I think you were just trying to make a, a fat <laughs> joke, it's going to backfire on you. Because Mike Hill and I had some chats about working out, pumping iron. Um, he's gonna kind of give me some tips, and I don't need them, but I mean, he's gonna give them to me anyway, and I'm gonna start getting in shape. I heard when you went in, and they weighed you when you went in, that the scale said, one at a time, please. 